Elijah Muhammad means nothing we, to we, you. Oh, Martin Luther all, King. We can't all marry Marcus Frederick Obama. Douglass. No, no, no. I'm not talking about those men in particular. I'm talking about the movements, the Black Panthers, the Nation of Islam. We we can't. So you're saying to me there's never been a collective of black men who led? I'm in spite that, of 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 circumstances created to exterminate them? You're saying that? I'm saying that there is never I'm saying that black men And it is no lie that these women need psychological evaluation. I don't care if they don't like me. I came here to stunt. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if they don't. What's good, everybody? If you're first time viewing my content in this video, make sure you like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Today, we are watching one of my, one of the people that I follow on Instagram uh, personally, but he is a great filmmaker. I, I highly, um, I'm highly inspired and motivated by his consistency in the way that he film and the way that he produce content and stuff like that. I support a lot of his content that I see on social media and he produces a lot of great content on Instagram and YouTube, uh, especially on YouTube. He has these, uh, we need to talk interviews with um, a lot of black people and he's a great interviewer. So shout out to him and his content. I will have this video linked at the description box below because I don't think I'm going to watch the whole video. But there are certain pointers in this video concerning the basis of this divestor that we will talk about in this video. So don't forget to give me the HBO special. Help a brother out. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, let's get into the video. You have to make yourself into the kind of man that women want. You sound like Kevin Samuels. How? You're literally saying what he says. You have to make yourself the type of woman that these type of men want. No, no. So what's the no. difference? Because, what's the difference? Because according to him, you shouldn't go to college. You because those because those, because those because those men don't value that. Okay, well, what am I supposed to do? Sit in the hood and be poor as hell? But that's not that's not the point. The point is <laughs> that is the point. The, the that, rhetoric is the same. You're that's saying not, that you're, is not the same thing because okay. that is not the same. No, no, no. The things are different. I agree with you. The things are different, but the rhetoric is the that same. Is not, you're saying not the same thing. Okay, so if I was to say to you, you have to become the type of man that the type of woman you want because would like. Wait, 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 wait. If I have to become the type of man that the type of woman I want wants, correct? You have to become the type of man that women want. Yes. Perfect. And if I said to you, you have to become the type of woman that the type of man you want wants. Is that correct as well? Wrong. Because men and women are not the same. The reality. I goodness gracious. <laughs> how how hard is it to conceive that particular notion of and this ain't got nothing to do with men and women are different. We ain't talking about roles. We're talking about accountability. If a man wants a particular woman, he has to be a certain man that attracts the type of women that he wants. That is two plus two equals four. So if a woman wants a particular status of men, she has to be a certain type of woman that can attract the type of man that she wants. Can I get an amen in the chat? All right. Lord. It is is not rocket science, people. <laughs> who even made that quote? Like who? I would, like we we always say that like who even made the quote? You know, that's not rocket. I don't know. We'll deal with that for another day. But let's continue. The reality for a lot of black women is that they are the breadwinners of their families. They are the they are the higher. That earners. wig is they atrocious. Are the ones who are most responsible. They are the providers and the protectors of that household. You they know what I would tell them? Who have to keep the keep the lights on? You know what I would tell those women? I, I would tell those women to go back to the drawing board and become the type of woman that the type of man that wouldn't require you to be the breadwinner that would be attracted make, to. That, that's not realistic. That is not a realistic. Why not? Because the, the point I was making is that a lot of our women don't hold white men or white love interests to the same pseudo masculine standards. So the white dude doesn't have to make six figures. We the black dude does. Black women ask for black men to make six figures. No, well, but you but. Sure, it might it might not be six figures, but it's other metrics. You guys, you guys impose. And again, if it was just me saying this at my age and other men saying this at their age, I've had conversations with boys in high school, and they say the same thing. They're not making money, but they're talking about like, you know, uh, masculine features and things like that. So my thing is, why aren't you? Why are you grading white dudes on the curve and still talking shit about black men? Black men 
don't I mean those men who are committed who are doing the right things based on male uh, curriculums or whatever the case may be and we're still eating what can you say to us I do, I'm saying that I don't see that as being a real problem because there are not enough black men what's the that, definition of gaslighting making somebody believe that their reality is not real what did you just do you're not your reality you I mean you your reality just gaslighted is, Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Don't ever, for the fellas who are watching, don't ever allow a woman to gaslight you, especially when you're dealing with the basis of dealing with these type of topics that concern relationships and men and women. What she is saying here is delusional. Because in her reality, the particular life that she has created for herself, what she continues and chooses to manifest within her life, she is going out of her way to say that black men need to do better. Black men aren't uh, matching up to her standards, right? But as a man thinketh, so shall he be or she. So you can't be out here on social media talking about black people this black men this black women this and then in the same breath complain and moan about how you can't find a good black man or woman and so you are just going to look outside you are what you attract and whatever you entertain that's that's just what you're going to keep allowing to happen into your own life but you can't be out here playing stupid and saying that okay it's true on one side of the spectrum but on the other side or how you perceive it it's not true you can't be over here talking about oh we're always disrespected oh we're always overlooked and undervalued and so then a man comes to you logically with emotional intelligence as well and tells you that okay i hear you and i understand you but the same thing's happening over here yeah, but it ain't happening as much as it's happening to us. Like, like, when did this become a competition? You, you know what I'm saying? You ever came across some women like that? Okay, y'all might be getting disrespected, but it ain't, it ain't nowhere near to how black women get disrespected. All this type of stuff. I'm not here to compete with you on who's the most overlooked and undervalued. That shouldn't even be in your vocabulary to begin with. It shouldn't be in your vocabulary or even in your mindset of being disrespected and unprotected and undervalued and overlooked because you claim to be a god or a goddess, right? You claim that you you can manifest things in the universe. You have this 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 connection with your ancestors and the spirit guides and all this type of stuff. But you unconsciously and subconsciously, which is the most powerful thing in the world, you subconsciously and unconsciously curse yourself every single day by talking about how you can't achieve the love that you deserve by your own men and women. It's ridiculous. But let's continue. You're stuttering because that's what you just did. No. <laughs> how can we honestly have this conversation and claim that black men are enjoying all the perks of masculinity and madness in this particular country without pointing out some of the pitfalls of manliness and specifically black manness that black men have to suffer because it's like when it's time to give out empathy we should take it even when it's time to give out blame we should take all the blame black men should take all the blame and it's like that doesn't make sense i don't similarly i could say black women have never had the disposition of femininity even when black men did lead no you but never, i'm not saying that because you never let because you never led though black men never led no ever no wow so very 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 disingenuous to say and i remember having this conversation a while back in one of my classes back in i believe this was 2019 i was in my african-american studies class shout out to dr Lindsay, and he asked the whole class if you know for us as as well he has the black woman rather right he has the black woman do they feel protected when they're around black men right and there was no woman that raised their hand when he asked them, do they ever feel protected? Right. 
And so we're having this discussion and you're hearing some of the women talk about like how certain black women don't, uh, certain black men don't do this and certain black men don't lead in this particular spectrum. And, and they never seen a black man do that. And so I had to let everybody know in the classroom that just because you may not personally see it doesn't mean that it's not happening. That the only reason why you even have a black love movement, you have a black is beautiful movement a black excellence movement, a black power movement, uh, a black is uh, a black is this and, and black is that black is the only reason why you have the civil rights movement, the the power to the people movement, you know, going all the way back to Elijah Muhammad and Marcus Garvey, even before them. The only reason why you even have the, the platform to discuss certain matters that concern our consciousness is is due to the black man. You know, it is it, very disrespectful to spit in the face and disrespect all the black men who have come before you, all the black men even nowadays who put in the work. Whether it's spiritual, whether it's activism, whether it's occultism, is is very disingenuous and it's very ignorant for you to go out of your way on social media or on these type of platforms and say black men never led. That's just, <laughs> that's just very, it's an outlandish argument. Uh, it's, it's an outlandish statement to make. Because Garvey means continue. nothing to you. Elijah Muhammad means nothing we, to we, you. Oh, Martin Luther all, King, all marry Marcus Frederick Trump. Douglass. No, no, no. I'm not talking about those men in particular. I'm talking about the movements, the Black Panthers, the nation of Islam. We, we can't. So you're saying to me, there's never been a collective of black men who led? I'm in saying, spite yeah. of 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 circumstances created to exterminate them you're saying that i'm saying that there is never i'm saying that black men so you're okay. saying black men made a concerted decision to abandon i don't know if a decision was concerted i know okay that but, but you said they abandoned their post yes okay perfect before that you said they never had a post so which one is it <laughs> you, you uh, talked yourself into that gotcha trap. You said we weren't leaders. Then you said we you're, abandoned you're, leadership. You're really like mincing words here, and you're like really like. Because really <laughs> nah, like, we we got to stand beside and behind not. what we say. I'll give you an opportunity to recant your first statement when you said black men were never leaders. Black, black black men were never leaders. But you just said they abandoned the home. Wow. Yes, but it doesn't mean they were leading in the home. Okay, so what did they abandon? They what? they abandoned their kids. They abandoned their wives. Okay, and what what is their role in their kids and lives uh, wives lives? Um, to be a husband and father. What is husband and father? What is that role? I don't know. It's it's what it's what men are supposed to do if you're going to get married a, and have kids. It's, it's, it's what a, men are supposed to do. Oh, it's a on. leadership role. They right? lead, but, but it doesn't mean you're a leader. It's in a that leadership. Role. Role. Again, Kevin Samuel was married. He wasn't a leader is, in his in his marriage. Is husband and father a leadership role? No, <laughs> not not intrinsically. No. Okay, so what what are you complaining that black men did? Because if you were saying black men abandoned their leadership responsibility. We can go there, but what are you, if we weren't leaders, we were never leaders, then what is your gripe with us? What are we doing wrong? Black men what complain that the black community is, is, is woman led. You complain that it's a gynocracy. You complain that feminism has taken over, but you don't, but you don't lead anyway. And according, you according to you, we've never led. I mean, I don't know why you're so caught up on if you never or ever led, or was there a point in time in history where you at one time did, what does that matter in 2022? Because history is cyclical and words mean things and if you use very dangerous rhetoric and let's say for instance you you have a son you have a daughter and you're teaching them history that black men never led that sets a very dangerous paradigm and i think that's where it comes it does it's very dangerous and i've talked about this in different tiktoks and and short reels that it's very dangerous for you to go on social media and spew out such a rhetoric that your own men and women are, are trash your own men and women haven't done this your own men and women are are not compatible to be partners and stuff like that like like i want you to really just take consideration on the stuff that you put out on social media because if you go on social media and you want black love but in the same breath talk about all oh, black women aren't compatible to be partners with and black women are hoodlums and and they're just ghetto and loud and ratchet and all they want to be is independent and all this type of stuff right if you set that to be in a standard in a narrative for the upcoming generation what do you think they're going to do 
both black men and women, what do you think? How do you think that the little black boys and girls are going to react and respond to that? I remember when I did a video about this. Uh, it was this black woman who was a teacher. She's a third grade teacher. And she said in the in, in the third grade cr uh, classroom, this little black girl who's basically regurgitating everything that her mother done said. Right. Because she told the little boy, all you do is 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 stay at home and you don't do nothing and you just play your video games and you're lazy and all this type of stuff and all this type of stuff so there's this whole back and forth thing going on between this little black girl and little black boy the teacher who's a black woman intervenes and basically advocates and condones everything that the little girl said concerning the basis of how men are all y'all do is is stay at home y'all lazy y'all don't do nothing all this type of stuff and for the, the teacher to condone that narrative instead of stepping in and giving a positive narrative, that could have changed the life of all the black boys in that classroom. Like, like really think about that. That could like, like to step in and be like, wait, hold on now. I don't know where you grew up from and I don't know where you came from and I don't know how you was raised. But black men on my end ain't never been like that. Black men have always been uh, active. They've always built. They've always been leaders. They've always had high position in jobs. They 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 never been uh, potato. What they call them? Couch potatoes. Potato couch. They never been lazy. They never been lousy. They never been uh, unproductive. They've always stood up for something. They they've always made the sacrifice. To provide for their family. To provide for the people that they love. So don't ever come into this establishment. Or in this classroom. And speak so negatively of your own reflection. That should have been the standard. And the basis of that. But instead the teacher condoned. What the little black girl said. And so these are things you have to take into consideration. If you want respect. You have to give respect. You cannot expect the world to respect you. And you don't even respect your own black men and women. And I know you're not supposed to receive, I'm not telling you to try and receive validation from the world, right? But as I heard one person say on a podcast, it's not about whether or not what they say about us is true. Or it's not about whether or not we should care about what they say about, uh, about us. It's not about whether or not we should care about what they say about us, but is what they're saying about us relevant? That's something you need to keep in mind. Let's continue. From when people say the diverse community sounds like white supremacy, because you say a bunch of lies to paint a narrative that isn't substantiated by any fact. It's not. It's not a lie. And even it, if again, even okay, if so prove it. What one it's, time in history do for us today? How does that help us today? Well, it's it's more than one time, um, obviously. Play. People who know history, it's more than one. I've given you a bunch of examples, but um, what it does is it changes the paradigm, because. One of the things that we often do as a community is we, we, we talk about ourselves as being incapable of doing better without recognizing the fact that we were kidnapped, without recognizing the fact that we were put in situations to perpetuate our own dysfunction mm -hmm. for the benefit of the white so uh, society that we now run to to be our saviors. I think it's very dangerous if we become dismissive of one another's experiences. So similarly, I could say black women in mass are not deserving of good men because they're not feminine. I don't say that. I say that these are the things black women need to do in mass. And for the ones who are doing the right things, if they are getting bad experiences, that's unacceptable, black men. Like you shouldn't like you could treat the 90 other ones like that, but don't treat her like that. Like she's on her job. She's doing the right thing. Similarly, at the very least, what you could say is if a black man is doing his job, he's deserving of a good black woman. But you're unwilling to say that. And, and you would think that the average person could really understand that and the average person i would think the average black person does understand that that rhetoric but you have a lot of self-hating black people even in vice versa when you're dealing with black men who might be a little too deep into the red pill you know they they have this mindset about their own women and the and so when you come across these divestures you know some of these femme fatales it gets to the basis where they can't even say that there are any good black men because they are just so hurt and traumatized by whatever has happened to them personally. It's indeed ridiculous. But so your thoughts concerning the whole matter is at hand. Let me know how you personally feel about the basis of this conversation. Have you ever came across people like that? Do you agree with her? 
you know, uh, is she making some really good pointers? Um, is is this conversation that we continue to have around the basis of this this so called gender war? Like, is this even constructive at the end of the day? You know, are we being distracted? You know, will we ever come to a solution on coming together? You know, in in rebuilding and reforming Black love. Let me know how you feel about that in the comment section below. All right, till next time. Hey. Long as I got God, black women and the squad.